Hey soul family, welcome back to the channel. This is the White Feather Tarot and in today's reading we are doing advice on your current situation. And to do this reading we are going to be picking three piles. I see one has already fallen. Oh thanks, two and three. Let's see what we have. So for pile number one, uh, this is your picture oh can you see that my apologies i'm sorry this is pile number one for pile number two this is your picture and for pile number three this is your picture now if you like to pick with crystals let me add these right now there we go. So for pile number one, we have the white howlite. And this is what your crystal looks like. For pile number two, we have the selenite. And this is what your crystal looks like. For pile number three, we have the Dalmatian Jasper. And this is what your crystal looks like. All right. So take a look at which one of these three piles or three crystals you're the most drawn to. And that's probably the pile for you here today. As I always say, if you feel drawn to more than one pile, perhaps you're even drawn to all of the piles, trust that there is a message for you. Your intuition will always guide you to the right readings, whether it's just one, two, several, or all. Uh, it is your magic. It will always guide you to hearing the message for you. So trust it and allow it to lead the way. And as usual, you'll find the timestamps down in the description box. Click on your times and I'll see. Hey soul family, I'll see you in your readings. Hey soul family, welcome to your card uh, shuffling and preparation process. It is so lovely to have you here. It's one of the times that I really enjoy with you guys. <laughs> so thank you for being here. Also, I find it very important for you to be part of this, of your pile preparation, uh, to have your energy as we prepare for your piles. So again, thank you for being here. Let me introduce the cards to you. On the left are the oracle decks that we will be using and on the right are the tarot decks that we will be using. Right, so let's get uh, right into it. We will be shuffling with intention as we do every day and we want to ask what is your advice on your current situation? So one two and i actually feel this one and three okay let's now pick your next oracle deck and ask thank you what is your advice on your current this one situation okay so our oracle cards for today's reading uh, are ready let's now pick your tarot we'll be taking two cards from each of these decks but from this one we'll be just we'll be taking just one so let's leave it towards the end here 
and yep ah oh, did i tell you guys i think i told you guys i love this deck <laughs> it is so colorful and bright and full of things to look at the body gestures of the pe of the people as well as the meanings of the animals and <sighs> i think i gushed enough <laughs> over this deck i really love it okay So we want to know what is your advice on your current situation? What is your advice on your current situation? Oh, this one, thank you. No, here. is your advice on your current situation ah these are two right one and two thank you very much okay i'm going to keep this deck next to us for clarification during the reading let's keep it here now and last but not least actually this is the last one so what is your advice on your current situation Three. Well, it gets three then. All right. Now on to our last deck. I don't know if I mentioned this or not, but we'll be taking just one from this deck. So what is your advice on your current situation? What's your advice on your current situation? One and three thank you very much all right so we now have our three piles ready <laughs> let's now put them together neatly so that we can start your reading also ready oh let's put the crystals so the white howlite the selenite and the oh no wait third pile <laughs> let's put it let's put them together neatly So, pile number 
number three is also now ready. There we go. With the Dalmatian Jasper. Lovely. <laughs> so our three piles are now ready. Thank you so much for spending this time with me. I truly appreciate it. I appreciate your existence on this channel. I feel blessed to be surrounded by beautiful souls like you. Thank you so much. Love you. <laughs> and let's get into your reading. Hi, pile number one. Welcome to your reading. Let's take a look at what your advice is on your current situation. You have chosen the beautiful white howlite, uh, um, as well as the Vitala's experience. Really interesting. I wonder how this is going to fit into your reading. Let's keep your main card here. And let's first take a look at your oracle cards. So you have the castle. Let me adjust that. There we go. Really interesting card. Maybe you seem to be in a unique position. So the you're in a unique position, but there's something that you can't see, my dear pile number one, that you are being advised on. With the black, you feel something is not right, but you are still in a very unique situation. So let's get more information about uh, your situation and your advice. So you have the chipmunk and Laurel with success. Laurel is needing more information, right? Let's see. Um, let's take a look at your goddess. So you have the seven of wands with Durga. Interesting. Right. Let's keep your main card here and let's take a look at the rest of your tarot cards so pile number one you have the uh, seven of wands with a dark horse mm. do you see how similar these are you're supposed to maybe keep someone out or something let's see let's see pile number one all right, you have um, this is the temperance card called the angel in this deck, a divine higher genius. This is uh, the god Janus looking towards the past and the future. Okay, okay, we'll get into that in a second. We'll get to that in a second. You have the Eight of Cups, mm. the Five of Cups, the King of Swords, the Six of Swords, The Four of Pentacles. And you have the Two of Wands. Hmm. So pile number one, although you are in a very favorable position, I do see here with the five of pentacles and the two of wands that you're really doubting the situation that you're in. Something doesn't feel right about it. So by you being in a favorable position could be, let's say this is a work example. And you're a very skilled person. 
but you kind of feel something is off about the company that you're in or your manager or the deal that you're doing with a certain partner or a person. This could also be in your personal life. It doesn't have to be in your work at all. This could be your dealings with a certain person. Um, it could be a relationship or a friend, someone that you've met in any case where you feel something is off about them. You kind of talk to yourself out of it sometimes and say, hey, everything seems to be going well. I don't need to judge this person or this situation too early, but something feels off. Why do I keep saying something feels off? I'll get back to this in a second, but I do want to show you what I'm seeing. So we have v Vitala's experience here. A Vitala, by the way, is a spirit that possesses uh, and animates a dead body, right? Um, we have depicted on your main card here, the King Vikrama, and he promised a Tantric, who is a black magician, to get him a Vitala, uh, uh, supposedly to help him on some noble purpose. Now, when King Vikrama went into the forest and found one of the... Um, Vitalas. The Vitala tested him for a couple of hours or a couple of days, I think, trusted him and decided to go uh, on its journey with King Vikrama. Now, on the way, the Vitala learned that they were going to this black magician or this tantric, and he told him that this specific black magician wanted to capture him when he was a little boy to use him uh, to become a, an immortal body. And so he told him not to trust him and told him that he was about to kill him, uh, to kill King uh, Vikrama, because he, want, he wished to do the same with him. So he advised him. He told him, when you bow down to the goddess, he uh, is going to behead you. So to correct that, ask him how to show you how to bow correctly and instead kill him. And this is exactly what happened. And um, King Vikrama killed him. The gods um, blessed him for saving the earth from such a horrible tantric. And, you know, uh, the Vitala was there uh, helping him whenever he, w he called upon him. Also gave him boons. So anyways, my point here is that you have a certain gut feeling about something. Something is telling you this doesn't feel right. This doesn't feel right. And it takes boldness to cut that thing out. Like it took boldness from King Vikrama to actually kill this tantric, right? Not to mention, you're not really sure things on the outside are not showing you exactly why you feel this way. But we see that you feel something is off or wrong about something. Now, let me give a warning here or a preface, a preface to what I'm trying to say. If you're dealing with someone in your life and you do not feel off about them, your gut is not telling you something. This is not the reading about this specific person. This is a reading about a situation or a person that you f have a bad feeling towards. If you're feeling off towards something, this reading is here trying to advise you on the situation, telling you to listen to your gut feeling. If it feels off, it feels off. Now, what I'm seeing here is that the other path, and we'll get to that in a second, seems like it needs some courage from you, especially especially that you have Durga here. And by the way, Durga is Kali. So <laughs> we'll get to that in a second. So it needs a lot of courage from you. It needs uh, some type of boldness and strictness from your side. And it's a little bit of uh, too much work than the situation you're already in. Um, and that I see from the chipmunk, right? So Laurel means to think about something and to plan ahead the chipmunk. The chipmunks, by the way, they always take, take the path that is le least traveled. And so along the way, they find um, prizes or treasures, hidden pathways, adventures. They find a lot of things 
because they dare to take the road less traveled. So from that, I do see your advice in this situation that you don't have a good feeling about is to let go of what feels wrong and go out into the path that is going to take longer maybe or needs further exploration or needs you to uh, think about it again because it doesn't feel right. You know, you have the key to unlock this issue or this situation. You're not stuck. You just need to take the other path that needs more thinking, that needs to, that needs boldness more important, you know, because Kali, especially in the Durga form, is here to make us win, is here to find, to help us find the boldness within us, to overcome a, a certain challenge or overcome a certain situation that we don't feel too good about. Because on the other side, outside, is where we will find exactly what we want. Now, seeing that you're already in a favorable position, do not compromise yourself, uh, pile number one, just to make it easier on yourself. In fact, we see here with the four of pentacles, with the, tra with the suitcases, just go, uh, eight of uh, cups, again, the idea of go, let it go, it doesn't feel good, and take care of you because you are the most important thing at the moment. Now, this is why we see the temperance card here. Let me show you something. You know, the temperance card, we have one leg in salted water. It's the salted water of uh, awareness. And the other leg is on the ground, uh, uh, creating stability. So we see here the idea of thought, thinking. It's an alchemical process. Nothing is black or white. Nothing is, that's the right way to do things and that's the wrong way to do things. Every situation in the world needs its unique type of thought and balance. Like for example, you could be the same person getting into the same coffee shop, meeting the same barista and asking for the same drink and not getting the exact drink that you want and you could be the same again same person same coffee shop same person same everything same drink and a, a nice smile would make their day and you'd get extra whipped cream if this is what you love and you know done with love with a heart that makes you smile on the cup and it's just filled with love and care and the whole situation is exactly the same with a simple smile, everything changes. Now, let's say you, we change another element. Same, 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 everything. Same smile, same everything, but different person. Now, there is a different element. You smile, and then they, in another country, in another place, they take your, your smile as a weakness and not as a, a kind gesture. And they take you for granted. They're not worried about you, and they, you know, they... Uh, they don't take care of your drink and you get simply something that you do not like at all. And so here is the thing. There isn't one way or one rule to doing something. If you've done something before and you've and it worked, uh, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to work this time. Uh, sometimes it's not you. Sometimes it's a, a certain situation or the people you're dealing with. And you're being asked to pause with the seven of wands here, protect your energy and to think with the king of swords as well, very clearly about what is right for you, not what is most comfortable at this point. Do you see here with the six of swords moving away slowly? Here you see a town that is burning. Uh, perhaps there was a c civil war or something. Is it called a civil war? Yeah. Yeah, it's called a civil war. And this person, with their thoughts, do you see what's coming from their head? With their thoughts, decided to leave all of this behind and raise their vibration, raise their thoughts to thinking ahead. What are they going to do about it and transpass this whole situation? And all they can see is a brighter future that is literally shifting their situation, bringing them up and moving them forward. So 
your advice in your current situation is not to sit there and wish for the best because the best doesn't seem to be in this area. Your advice, pile number one, is to uh, sum up your courage, be bold, and decide. The mere, um, sorry, the mere decision of deciding to be bold, taking a deep breath, <sighs> accepting that this may not be okay, and slowly but surely start planning how you can safely come out of this situation. Uh, how you can plan it carefully, how you can how you can find a better situation, a better job, a better a better anything really depends on what you're going through. Is the it will be the exact thought that will allow you to slowly move towards the right thing. The mere thought of acceptance will allow you to open a new page because sometimes we hate change. We don't like it. We want things to just work out. And sometimes we're really just like Kali or Durga shows. Sometimes we're just meant to conquer something. And here's the thing. If something is going to happen anyway, why wait for it to show its bad face? Why not act before anything happens? and start planning for the best for ourselves. We do see in your cards, uh, my dear pile, uh, number one, that you will be rescued, that you will. See, uh, the King Vikrama got boons. And if you don't know what boons means, it, boons are kind of like wishes, you know. Um, if you get a boon, then you get to wish for something. Like, you know how with Aladdin, they rub the um, lamp the lantern and they get a wish. It's kind of the same thing. So, so King Vikrama got a, got boons, which means that your dreams, exactly what you want, will happen for you. That's why you have the castle. From the very beginning, we can see your guide saying you're in a very unique position. And so it's really all an alchemical process of thinking of what to do in this unique situation and you will certainly, certainly find a way to get out of it safely. And on the other side, my dear pile number one, you will find something much better than the situation you're in. You know, sometimes, let's say renting, for example. You know how sometimes we find that place that we want to rent and we're like, oh, yes, this is really close to my work. There is this nice view that I can sit here at night and, you know and really rest and rejuvenate. Uh, this is exactly the place that I want. I'm sure there's no doubt about it. And then you get a lot of issues with this place. You don't feel good about the landlord. He's playing games, changing his words. The contract is different from what he promised you as he's luring you in. You try the water and it's not working. And, they, and then sometimes he's like, I'll fix it for you. And sometimes you're the one that's going to fix it. And then you find that you're the one who's going to be paying for this and that. And, and then it piles up and it, you've got a, a huge lump sum to pay. He's supposed to give it to you, but he's late. And now you're in trouble. And now you're worried that you've left your other apartment and you're not getting this apartment on the or the house in the right time. And you're just really worried. Something feels so off, but you're playing along because this person is showing you their nice face and they're like, oh, don't worry. It's going to be great. You're going to love it. I will. Whatever happens, I'm going to be taking care of you. I'd never let you be in a bad position. And then as time is progressing, you're really starting to see that you are in a bad position and that this person doesn't care. And so don't wait until you are in a bad position is the advice that I see here. Take action, pile number one. If you feel bad about something, take action. Sometimes the road is to, oh my God, am I going to now have to go all over again, start searching for an apartment, talking to other people? What if I now don't like the apartments that I'm seeing or the condo that I'm seeing or the house? And what if I don't find something on time? What if I hate what I find, but I wanted to rest here in this balcony or, or whatever? 
And the second you accept that, the second you accept that this is the situation and calmly take a deep breath and start looking, you will make some phone calls, start asking. We can see that you will find some jewels, just like the chimp monk. You will find something amazing that you wouldn't have otherwise found had you not looked. You'll, you'll find um, another place that has an even better view. Uh, way cheaper, not as close, but kind of close to your work, you know, uh, has more advantages, has a lot of things that are closer to your vicinity. You don't have to pay for three quarters of the things that you had. Turn on the water, it's working. Everything is beautiful. Is it available? Yes, it's available. You can start taking yes right away. I was going to say yesterday. <laughs> it's ready for you to take. Everything's good. You move into this house. It's perfect. And you start thinking, my goodness, how was I going to put myself in this horrible situation? Thank goodness I went out and explored for a better situation. So... That's an example to kind of show you the energy that I see in your reading. Pile number one, if you do not feel good about something, please let it go. Accept that it may not be good and start exploring your other options. Start, start exploring your exit. Start exploring what is best for you. You are, you, you are a very unique person. You deserve the best. Always remember that, my dear pile number one. Hold yourself dear in this way because you are that's what your cards are saying and you will find a great position you will find your boon my dear pile number one so pile number one that was your reading i hope you've enjoyed it and if you have please give me a thumbs up by the way if you love zodiac tarot reading tarot readings there is a channel it's my second channel it's the first link on the, in the description box don't forget to check it out and please subscribe to this channel if you've enjoyed this reading don't forget to click on your notification bell and please don't forget to check my productivity book pile number one this book is small, straight to the point, and so you won't procrastinate or waste time reading it, but you'll find that it has all the key advice and secrets to becoming a productive person right away, all while enjoying this process. And so if you're interested in checking it out, you'll find a link to this ebook down in the description box. And now there's also an audiobook if you love and enjoy audiobooks like me. And pile number one, it was such a pleasure doing this reading for you. Thank you for tuning in. <laughs> Wish you all the best of luck in your situation. I know it's going to go great for you. And I'll catch you in the next reading. Hi, pile number two. Welcome to your reading. You have chosen the beautiful Selenite as well as Arjuna's Dilemma. Let's take a look at the rest of your cards and see how they fit uh, into your reading. So we'll be taking a look at your oracle cards first. Let's see what you have, uh, pile number two. So you have the bee and pomegranate with productivity okay you have whoa <laughs> you have the starborn mm. isn't this really cool how about we swap them because i need the space put this here and now we have more space for your goddess card so you have the two of cups. Let's put it here first. Okay, now let's take a look at your tarot cards. These are already out. You have the eight of wands. You have the ace of cups. I want to check how we pronounce her name before I butcher it. <laughs> but we'll get into her in a second. You have the Ace of Wands with the Awakening or the Hollowed Flame. 
Whoa, two aces. This is three aces. My goodness. What is going on in your reading here? Uh, pile number two. Wow. So you have the ace of swords with the crowning. Sacred word. Okay, right. The two, the three cups. Uh, the three is uh, aces. Cups, wands, and swords. Wow. Wow. I'm already getting an idea, not going to lie, but let's see the rest. You have the Knight of Cups. How about we put it here? We need to, so you can see it. You have the Knight of Pentacles. Uh, it's really uh, interesting. Your reading is very clear. You have the Two of Wands. I mean, at this point, your reading is definitely clear. If you can't, you must be seeing it yourself too. <laughs> and you have the three of pentacles. Now that is completely confirmed. So your current advice on your situation. First things first, my dear uh, pile number two. With the star born in an egg that is cracking, it shows that you are about to become either a literal star or you are about to create something huge that is going to be very popular. I mean, if the cards aren't leading us enough, it, it, we're seeing your cards saying, get right into it, pile number two. Do you see that? The eight of wands is velocity, is speed. And you're kind of getting an advice of move right into it. Create that new beginning for yourself. <laughs> Do you see that with me? It's like a confirmation. I feel like your guides couldn't confirm it enough. Start that new beginning now. What pent what ace is missing? It's the ace of pentacles. It's it's that beginning to actually start. You have you have the feeling, you have the idea, you have uh, the intention and we see that your guides are saying make that new beginning. The ace of pentacles is missing to emphasize on it an emphasis of something that's not there that must be there to complete this cycle and that's why you really have the productivity and the pomegranate with productivity again the idea of come on let's get right into it here you have krishna uh, ch uh cherry as a chair ut charity to Arujna going to a battle. So it's going to take some work and effort from you. But we see with Krishna being the charity that the universe or God or source, whatever you believe in, is really guiding you towards it, it will be helping you out greatly. Three of Pentacles is saying, get straight to work, bring out these creative juices that you have. Uh, and make that new beginning because it's obviously doing something wonderful for you. You're going to find yourself doing these things. Do you see how with the Knight of Pentacles, there is a ballet dancer uh, dancing its way uh, into that. And you have the Knight of Cups, again, standing, loving being in the water. You know, the, the Knights are always energies of... Um, Following your passion, following your heart, following that calling, sometimes to your own detriment. And I'm not saying that's your situation here, but I'm saying it's to that extent to just at this point, phase everything out, phase your worries, phase the, um, the questions that you have about it, phase maybe... Uh, what people are saying, phase everything out and only focus on one thing. And that's what your heart is guiding you to do, uh, pile number two. See, the, with the two of wands, it says, you know, two of wands is either balancing two things at the same time or balancing your life or maybe trying to find your way through something wondering about something and trying to find your way through it and you see this specific card someone using their two wands to plant something new so the idea of starting something planning planting a seed is very clear uh, in your reading uh, my dear pal number two it's really there's no question about it the egg again another confirmation if you've been wondering 
about your reading it is saying your guides are choosing to show you the same thing over and over uh, an egg is a, of course a birth of something and it's about to crack into some sort of stardom so what is it my dear pile number two that is your heart your heart in specific is leading you to do what do you wish you could be doing and successful at and becoming a star at what is it and obviously the one thing that may be standing in your way at the moment is productivity is you taking action and doing something about it and here your guides are saying don't let that stand in your way get straight to it uh, and start working uh, start working start doing what is necessary make yourself busy until you get into the rhythm of that thing that you're trying to create and before you know it you'll have that honey or you'll have that which you are seeking uh, pile number two i want to go and check now how to pronounce her beautiful name is it lorelei she's the german spirit of eternal des desire can you believe that it's something in your heart that is singing calling for you and this calling is not there as a coincidence or just not there to make you suffer this calling is there um vibrating the strings of your heart for a specific reason it's meant to push you towards that new beginning let me go and see how to pronounce her beautiful name one second lorelei doesn't this knight of cups look like lorelei it's so sweet it's like we were just saying um you following your desire and i notice now that she looks like lorelei so yes pile number two your heart is screaming for a desire there is no question about that go after it you are going to succeed pile number two you are going to see see this is there's no um doubt why you were you you were drawn to pile number two your card you have krishna being the chair you see here you are being carried and taken care of and all you need to do is just take that action you know plant that seed and the rest is taken care for you because you're meant to step into that which your heart is speaking for uh, pile number two you will rise to stardom or you're going to create something that will boom that will be great the way your heart wants it the energy in your heart will be the reason why this comes out so good uh, pile number two also i see that you're very skilled maybe you're good with your hands you have motor skills do you see all of that art or you might just simply be very skilled in something that people are really in awe about or will be in awe about and you're being asked to use it to start using it uh, pile number two i really do hope you heed this call because you are about to begin something so let's get some advice for you on how you are being called here to begin this what are you supposed to do exactly so what is pile number two being advised to do? What are you being advised to do exactly? Oh, this one um, I'll take because it was um, shifting from the deck. So do you see that? jump start <laughs> my dear number pile number two just throw yourself into it did you see that unbelievable you have the four of swords you know with the four of swords i'm really seeing quick re quit resting and and jump quit resting and jump or quit thinking about it too much and jump you have 
the tower. Do you see? Run towards it. Just let... Oh, there's something here as well. Uh, pile number two. Okay, I'll get into that in a second. You have the six of wands, victory, and the five of cups. And that's what we see with the tower here. Look, there are two paths for you at the moment. If you continue to stay where you are, it seems with the tower and the five of cups here that the world you're in is about to change for one reason or the other. Maybe this is talking about uh, an economic situation or maybe about some sort of thing changing in your life. And it's more favorable now that you start taking action because if you do, you're going to succeed greatly with the Six of Wands. There's no question about it. You're going to be very victorious with what you're starting. It will save you and create a star out of you, right? But if you don't, it just seems to me like that's why you have the Four of Swords. Now I understand. It's, there's Don't rest. Now is not the time for resting, pile number four. If you stay where you are a little longer, you might find yourself in a position that is very unfavorable, that you may not like. So I feel like your guides here are really trying to save you. This is why this is an advice on your current situation. It might look okay now, but later on may not be the same. So uh, pile number two, your advice is maybe there's a little bit of effort now, but you're going to love, do you see? You're going to love with the two of cups, what's coming ahead. And with Lorelei, of course, and the knight of cups. You're going to love what's coming for you. But if you stay, you may not in the future, in the near future maybe, be in a favorable position uh, um, at all that where you would have wished that you had not rested and gone right to it. But if you do, like we said, and you get straight into it as advised, my dear pal number two, you're going to be some sort of star. You're going to create something, as they say, boombastic, <laughs> something brilliant. So I hope you heed the call, my dear pal number two. I hope you get to it. Don't rest. Now is not the time for resting. Now is the time to spring into action. My dear pal number two, that was your reading. By the way, if you're interested in becoming more productive, and enjoying productivity. I do sell a productivity book, an ebook. It's small, straight to the point, and so you won't procrastinate, you won't waste time reading it, but you'll find that it has all the key advice and secrets to becoming a productive person right away. As I said, all while enjoying the process. If you're interested in checking it out, you'll find a link to this ebook down in the description box. And now there's an audiobook, as I always say, if you love listening to audiobooks, I, I certainly do. And uh, pile number one, that was your reading. Also, one more thing. If you love Zodiac readings, Zodiac Tarot readings, uh, I have a link to my second channel down in the description box. It's the first link. Uh, you might enjoy that as well. I know I love uh, Zodiac readings very much. <laughs> and pile number two, that was your reading. I hope you've enjoyed it. And if you have, please give me a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel so that you never miss a reading that I upload. Don't forget to click on your notification bell. And pile number two, thank you for tuning in and I'll catch you in the next reading. All the best of luck. Bye. Hi, pile number three. Welcome to your reading. You have chosen the beautiful Dalmatian Jasper as well as Ilvala's Hatred. Let's see how this fits into your reading. We're, of course, um, taking a look at advice on your current situation. So let's start with your Oracle cards first. You have the mask. Interesting. Can you see that or? Yes, that's much better. So you have the mask. You have the Cayman and Poppy. I think the uh, this is how you pronounce it, Cayman. I know it's a type of, not lizard, but uh, alligator. All right, so you have the Cayman and Poppy 
with dreams. And this is interesting. It's like you're, you know, both the caiman and the poppy give this effect of being uh, tranquil and calm. The caiman rests in peace until it wants to attack its prey. The poppy, of course, we extract the um, uh, opanoids or what is it called? Opium. Opium, right? So there is this resting face resting phase face phase okay i understand now this mask is talking about a phase in your reading not a face let's take a look at the rest of your cards so you have the hanged man and oh you have the archangel of glory this is of course the king of wands angel of art and grace you have, yes, you have three of those in your reading. You have the Nine of Pentacles with the Eminence. And you have the Six of Cups with the Memory Keeper. Really interesting. I feel like this, these three together have a message. So I'll keep them together. You also have the Ace of Pentacles. If you came from... Pile number two, there is your Ace of Pentacles, right? If you didn't, uh, please forget about it. You have the Ace of Pentacles. You have the Six of Cups again. You have the Magician. Oh, you have three of these as well. No, you don't. Sorry. You have the Magician. Oh, and you have the Sun. You have strength. And let's reveal this later. There's no space for it at the moment. So obviously there is a message here uh, for you. Uh, pile number three. So what are we seeing here? Hmm. Six of cups coming twice. It's interesting, pile number three, how you have a lot of uh, mystery in your reading. Something is not seen here. We didn't cover that uh, pile because there wasn't space for it when we were uh, re revealing your cards. So this looks like to me, especially with the two six of cups dealing with inner child. Now, here is the situation exactly. You have with the hanged man, the goddess Tatiana, which is the Babylonian goddess of the deep, vast salt waters of the sea. In fact, um, she is the primordial sea. And so this is making me understand that there is something hidden deep within your subconscious mind that you can only access if you allow it to well up uh, as uh, in the form of intuition, information welling up from within you. I see here, pile number three, with the nine of pentacles. See, we did say this is saying a story together. With the nine of pentacles, I see that you can't you may be tricking yourself into being happy about a certain situation that deep within yourself you're not really happy about because p part of the magician's meaning is a trickster especially that this specific magician is performing some sort of trickery he has an audience here and he's pulling up all these games trying to act as a magician right pulling up a trick on a stage. So I feel like you are tricking yourself in one area or the other into feeling happy. You're not aware of that. In fact, in fact, we have 
the mask. We'll talk about the phases in a second. But you have the mask, meaning you're putting on a mask, trying to enjoy something that is not really for you. You don't deep down enjoy it. Pile number three. So examples of these things could be trying to um, become part maybe of a group and trying to enjoy something that they enjoy so that you are you conform to the group and become part of them that's one thing another thing could be you've worked in a career all your life and you've built a lot deep down deep down you're not happy but you continue to convince yourself that you are another thing is maybe you're not happy in a certain partnership or a marriage and it takes a lot of boldness to admit it and so one way out for you is to convince yourself that you're very happy. The examples are really endless. I feel like you may be sedating yourself into accepting the situation, into convincing yourself that you do like uh, a certain situation in your life. When in fact, that's not really the case. Now, take care, pile number three. Continuing to do that at some point will lead to an unfavorable result. And why do I say that? It's because you have Ilvala's hatred. This is a long story of a demon and their brother. One of the demons, Il uh, Ilvala, um, once... Uh, once uh, visited a sage, asked him for a boon. A boon for, uh, is, by the way, when you want a wish granted, and the sage did not grant, did not uh, accept. And so, Ilvala uh, grew hatred towards sages. And a long story short, Ilvala and his brother, who's also a demon, uh, used to uh, uh, entrap sages and kill them. You know, you have a goat here because his brother, his demon brother was able to transform himself uh, into anything that he wants. Long story short, uh, I'm not going to say the whole story because the other part doesn't pertain to your reading. But my point here is uh, we can see in your reading that um, if you endure something for a long time, that unconsciously you're not too happy with, deep down you're not too happy with, at some point you're really going to hate the situation. And you might start doing some, some things that you later wished you hadn't done just because you've endured it for so long and it could start bringing, bringing a lot of anger and it could start bringing a lot of despise and hate that, will, that would affect many other areas of your life. And so the situation here is really calling for you to reflect with, with the Six of Cups coming up twice, to speak to your inner child and really ask yourself, am I happy? Do you see? You have the, this figure holding up a mirror to the, to the other figure. And it's like the idea of Asking yourself, am I really happy with what's happening? Am I happy with what I'm doing? Am I happy with the situation? And it's going to take a lot of boldness from you. And that's why you have the Archangel of Glory here. You know, this is the King of Wands illuminating something that is very important in your spiritual journey. It's time to open that door with the Ace of Pentacles. To start opening up a new door of thought, a new door a thought that would lead to a certain action. Maybe that's why you may be afraid of uh, tapping into a different thought. Because you know that once you turn on the light, you will have to take action. But that's exactly what's being advised in your reading, pile number three. You're being asked to have the boldness to turn on the light with the sun. 
to shed light on the side that is masked on your unconscious feelings and the way to well up the this information with your intuition to access your unconscious mind with Tiamat here is to ask the things that you may be afraid to ask. How do I feel about this? Am I genuinely happy? Is this exactly what I want? Is this really the way for me? Or am I too afraid of the consequences? How about I ask myself this question in a very safe way, where I keep doing what I'm doing, but at least know for now if this is the right thing for me or not. And as you safely answer these questions, you can also safely find a way to follow your heart. You don't need to make any abrupt changes for now, but do know that tricking your heart will is only sedating you for the moment, but may lead to a path that you will despise later. And now let's talk about the phases where things are not clear now, but calm, but later on can lead to darkness. Whereas if you take, if you start asking yourself these questions, you illuminate yourself on the things that you can't see, but it will ultimately take you to a, a very, a place that you will really love, a favorable place, not one that's tricking you, but your ultimate wish fulfillment. Uh, pile number three with the nine of pentacles here. Tricky energy, not easy, but has amazing results. Let's see what's hidden here. The emperor. See, this is exactly the situation here. Putting yourself, say, saying the truth to yourself may um, be something that you're really afraid of, may shake things up a little bit, but they will always put you in a strong position where there isn't weakness on the inside and a, a, an appearance of strength on the outside. The emperor is strength inside that is vibrating out effortlessly because it is the truth it's emanating from the inside you no longer have to exude that effort to make it happen also the emperor means you're going to put yourself in a strong position in a position where you achieve what you want the happiness that you want but on a strong foundation on an honest truth true strong foundation uh, pile number three, not on shaky grounds, not on the grounds of pretent pretentiousness, on you first before everyone or everything else. And it takes a lot of boldness and courage to follow the light. But do know, pile number three, that once you take off the mask, see the truth, maybe the initial shock isn't that good. But to have the boldness to go through that initial shock is what it is only is a place that is reserved for a few people who have that boldness and the courage to go through that door but once you're out from the door you reach destinations that no one else ever is able to reach no one is gets to be the emperor but the ones who open the door and it seems like you're being invited here to open the door, pound number three. You are meant to be that emperor. You're meant to step out with boldness. You know how something uh, hurts a little bit in the beginning, but then is okay. And then you start wondering why you took such a long time to get into it, even though it wasn't that bad after all. It's like that minute you want to get into this amazing pool. And so you start convincing yourself that, You'd rather sit there and chill and just enjoy the sun where, where even though your heart knows that you want to get into the pool and you, you tap your feet into the pool, it's cold and you're like, ah, oh, I can't do that to myself. 
<laughs> right? But the minute you are bold and you jump into the pool, you endure that instant hit and you go, ah, that was cold. <laughs> a minute or a few seconds, your body adjusts its temperature to your environment. You have the best time of your life in that pool. You enjoy it and you keep thinking, what was I thinking? Why did I waste time? Why did I not jump into the pool? Why did I waste hours? I love the pool. <laughs> so it's the same type of energy here where initially there is, when we're outside something, we tend to make it more grander more bigger than it actually is and it becomes scary and so we start accepting a situation as it is because we don't believe maybe that we'll be able to surpass that challenge but once you actually do step out a you realize it wasn't that bad b you become that winner that one person among a few who went to the other side and was able to experience the, the amazement of the other side, the respect of the other side, and the benefits of the other side. So you're being advised, pile number three, in your current situation, to speak to yourself honestly, to let what is in your subconscious mind, allow it to come out, allow it to see it, even if you're not going to take action right away. Communicate with it, just befriend it. Listen to what it wants to tell you and slowly take that action a little bit. But the boldness is your advice to just turn on the light, have the boldness to turn on the light. See, you're being invited. Just give me your hand. It's okay. Don't be afraid. I'll lead you to the way. So give yourself your angels are calling. Your spirit guides are calling. They're telling you, give me your hand. I'll guide you to the right way, to the other side, where your dreams are. It's not scary and it's way better than where you are. And if you listen to your heart, you'll know that this is the pathway to go. It might look like you're afraid in the beginning, but you'll hatch, it'll crack, you'll come out to the other side and you'll find that it's a much more marvelous world than in the egg that you're enclosed within. And uh, you'll start this new marvelous beginning for yourself instead of going down the path where you may despise things later on. Uh, and you start going down the path of genuinely getting your dreams coming true for you. Uh, pile number three. This is the message that I see in your cards. This is the advice for your current situation, pile number three. And with that, I wish you all the best of luck in your life. May you always be happy and achieve everything that you want. Tread carefully through these waters. Give a chance to listen to them. And you don't have to trick yourself. All you need to do is to slowly walk into the other side where you'll find your ultimate happiness. That was your reading, my dear pal number one. By the way, uh, if you enjoy Zodiac Tarot readings, do know that there is a link to my other channel down in the description box. And that was your reading, my dear pal number one. It was such a pleasure and an honor for me to be doing this reading for you. I wish you all the best of luck. And if you've enjoyed it, please give me a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel so that you never miss a reading that I upload. Don't forget to click on your notification bell. And please don't forget to check out my productivity book, pile number three. This book is small, straight to the point, And so you won't procrastinate. You won't waste time reading it. But you'll find that it has all the key advice and secrets to becoming a productive person right away, all while enjoying this process. You'll find that this book truly holds true to this promise. And if you're interested in checking it out, you'll find a link to this ebook down in the description box. And now there's an, also an audiobook if you love and enjoy audiobooks like me. And my dear pal number three, I was going to say my dear emperor, which you are. <laughs> it was a pleasure wishing you the best of luck. And I'll catch you in the next reading. Bye.